Our ocean is pivotal for sustaining all life on Earth. It produces half the oxygen we breathe, provides the main source of protein for over 3 billion people worldwide, and is home to 80% of all life on this planet. Most people do not realize that the biggest part of our ocean, nearly two thirds of it, lie in a wild west like place where we have very few rules and almost no ways to enforce them. This vast ocean expanse, the high seas, is beyond the control of any one country. I don't think that people are thinking somebody else is taking care of it. I just don't think it's on people's radar about this needs to be protected. It just seems so remote and so vast and limitless that I don't think we recognize that it has limitations and it's in severe trouble. The area that's being considered for this new marine protected area, Salas y Gomez and Nazca, draws its name, interestingly enough, from land features. Only a little bit of that land sticks up above the surface of the ocean. We generally look at the water and we see something big and flat. There's this sense that the ocean somehow is empty. But there's this unseen landscape. And what we've been talking about, particularly with Salas y Gomez and Nazca, is that unseen landscape. This is a part of the ocean that is full of all sorts of amazing stories, as well as resources, both natural and cultural. Think of a, an extensive mountain ridge that extends for several thousand kilometers. This is easily one of the most unique places on the planet, and particularly the fact that most of it is in the high seas, 70 plus percent of this entire underwater seamount chain is in unprotected waters. And the important thing is that this area is, uh, I would say, an oasis of high productivity and biodiversity that is located in the, this area of the Pacific. Right now, the ridge is in pretty good shape. There's modest amount of fishing effort taking place, but what we expect to happen in the not too distant future is acceleration in fishing pressure and also fishing going deeper and fishing the seamounts. Uh, these seamounts have cobalt crusts and a num number of other metals and uh, things that are very valuable for mining purposes. And so, Plopping these things off would just be disastrous. There are other activities that are going to start to take place that could put these seamounts at risk and the communities that live on them. For this particular region of the South Pacific, there's an ocean current system that tends to accumulate plastics floating at the surface that can rain down onto the seafloor. And the, the Salazi Gomez Ridge underlies this area in the ocean where those plastics are accumulating. There's the risk of climate change. So in this region, there's a strong influence from El Nino and La Nina events, which cause changes in water temperature between years. And as we continue to face climate change, that variation between cool waters and warm waters is going to change and it could upset the fragile ecosystems that persist on these seamounts. When you arrive to this area of the Pacific, eh, you're going to see crystal clear water. What you're going to see there is an extraordinary amount of life. This underwater mountain chain acts like a, an underwater superhighway of sorts. Whales, dolphins, tuna, 
a lot of the other highly mobile species utilize this mountain chain for migration from one place to the other. It's highly productive for them because the nutrient rich water coming from deep water um, helps feed all the resources that provide food for them. But it's also important for the species that live on each individual seamount. And so they're all interconnected. And if you break that chain, you've really disrupted the entire ecosystem. So you have like gigantic sizes of fishes, lobsters and other species that are living in these areas because they have been away from the human pressure. So they can reach extraordinary sizes. We can find in this area lobsters that measure 1.2 meters and weigh 8.5 kilos. You can find fishes like the big uh, amberjacks weighing more than 40 kilos. We should expect to see that everywhere if we are not destroying or overfishing our marine ecosystems. But we don't have the chance to see places like this in most of the ocean because most of the ocean is highly impacted by the human activity. Places like the Saligomas and Nazca Ridge and other remote places that are relatively lightly impacted by people are really important because they give us baselines of what ecosystems looked like in the past. Um, we have this problem globally of the shifting baseline where each subsequent generation has lower expectations of what is natural. And so we manage things thinking that, oh, we just need to get them back to X where in fact X is so far down the line from what it was like before that um, we're really not managing for a healthy ecosystem. So by having these places that are special, that are healthy and intact and have them protected, it really shows us how far we've gone from the natural baseline and gives us um, ways to gauge how our management strategies are doing elsewhere. But most importantly, there are these living laboratories, there's windows into the past of what ecosystems used to look like. We know that activities are going to increase uh, in the future. We also know that climate change is having a severe impact on the planet as a whole, and particularly the ocean. The ocean is becoming warmer, more acidic, and less productive overall. So our management strategies moving forward can't be the business as usual model. We need to manage taking a more precautionary approach because we don't know what the ocean and the world's going to look like in 10 or 20 or 30 years from now. Unlike many places on the high seas, we have a really long history of human uses in the Salas y Gomez and Nazca ridges. And not all of those uses have been bad because many people have come to this place, have discovered, have learned, and have gotten inspired. By creating a marine protected area in this place, we can ensure that those types of inspirations, scientific discoveries, uh, and things that really benefit all of us can continue. So there's a global responsibility to protect this genetic diversity that doesn't exist anywhere else. So protecting an area like this is a no-brainer. The United Nations is in the final stages of negotiating a treaty that would allow countries to establish marine protected areas on the high seas. We must grasp this enormous opportunity now so we can protect special places like the Salas y Gomez and Nazca Ridges for all of us and future generations.